uh, uh, development of fic. Yeah, circle uh, his uh, development of fic. All right, so let me share the screen or the slides with all of you. All right. So I hope you can see this slide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have discussed the third and the fourth stage of uh, fake development, uh, circle development of fake. And now, inshallah, we continue uh, on the fifth stage, okay, and also the sixth stage uh, of uh, historical uh, development of fake. All right, so the fifth stage, uh, named as consolidation period, all right, so uh, 950. Okay, uh, Christ era to uh, 1,000, okay, 258 uh, Christ era. Okay, so this is the duration. Yeah? Okay, so uh, let us move. Okay, so um, the fifth stage, yeah? So this stage uh, covered the period between the ends so of the first period and ascended to the second of Baghdad by the Mongols, okay, in the year uh, 656 at Hijra, or 1258 uh, Christ era. Okay, so this stage actually uh, saw the declining of the Abbasid uh, period, okay, or Abbasid dynasty until its eventual collapse. Okay, so this period is also known as the periods of taklid or imitation. Okay, so saw the decline of the early legacy of Islamic scholarship Okay, which was prominent. Okay, uh, this uh, legacy of Islamic scholarship was prominent, uh, prominent during the times of uh, Aimatul Mujtahidin or the first stage of uh, uh, fake development, right? Okay, so uh, the obvious uh, tendency was to follow the istihadat, the scholars. Okay, during this time, they followed the istihadat that was made by the earlier scholars and limit fit to this opinion. Okay, so they just follow it. Okay, the, the Muslim scholars during the time, they just follow it. So they have, okay, the istihadat that was made earlier, okay, by the uh, Muslim scholars. Okay, so what happened? What is the consequence? Okay, so this resulted in some scholars calling for the closing of istihad. Okay, so this phenomenon resulted in, uh, what we say, you know, some scholars closing uh, calls for the closings of istihad. Okay, the door of istihad. And then, uh, okay, next, uh, okay, as for the developments of the different mazhab, okay, uh, there was a drastic reduction in the number of mazhab. So if we see, okay, during the first stage, okay, during the first stage, during the times of Ayman al Mujtahidin, so many mazhabs, uh, many mazhab appeared, okay, but during this time, okay, there was a drastic reduction in the number of uh, mazhabs, okay, in, in which the focus uh, was on the four main mazhab. Okay, for example, uh, Marzab Hanafi, Shafi'i, Hanbali, and also uh, Maliki. Yeah, all right. Okay, so this is just the, like, the introduction. Okay, Taklid and its reason. Okay, so imitation. Okay, why? Uh, what are the reasons? Okay, uh, to have this uh, Taklid or imitation. So the reductions of all forms is the height and affected the dynamisms of fiqh. Okay, so uh, actually is the height, I mean taklid, okay. Uh, taklid uh, reduce all forms of is height and affected the dynamisms, uh, dynamisms of fiqh. Okay, so um, yes, fiqh, dynamism of fiqh, okay, which are supposed, uh, fiqh is supposed, are supposed to deal with contemporary issues, okay, and uh, provide reliable solution for them. Okay, but uh, Taklid, so this uh, uh, this uh, upper dynamism, okay, dynamisms of fit uh, was uh, affected, okay, because of this uh, taklid. Okay, so what is the meaning of taklid? Okay, so taklid is blind following, uh, blind following of a particular view without knowledge of the basis of the uh, view. Okay, so meaning that, uh, so it is actually associated with the following of the rulings given by uh, the predecessor. Of following the rulings of a specific mazhab. Okay. So, what are the factors? Okay, what are the factors uh, that lead uh, to that led to taklid? Okay, so we have four factors. 
Okay, the collapse of the Abbasid Empire into many states was accompanied by each state following mazhab of its choice. Okay, so each state, they have their own mazhab. Okay. Uh, okay, so for example, Egypt. Okay, Egypt followed uh, Shafi'i mazhab, for example. Then Spain. Okay, they followed Maliki mazhab. Okay, Turkey. Okay, Turkey and India, for example, they followed Hanafi. Okay, so meaning that all states, eh, Muslim states, they have their own uh, what we call mazhab, okay, to be followed. Okay, so each state began the practice of choosing uh, choosing its governors, administrators, and judge, okay, uh, from those uh, who followed its official mazhab. Okay, so uh, this is uh, one of the factors, okay, uh, uh, led to taqlid, okay, during this time. Okay, uh, the scholars of fiqh, Okay, the second one is the schools of fiqh. Okay, the schools of fiqh were completely formed. Uh, and okay, so the details work out, all right? Okay, uh, so the schools of fiqh were completely formed and all the details work out. So meaning that the laws for what had occurred as well as what might occur were already deduced and recorded due to extensive, uh, extensive developments of speculative uh, fiqh. Okay, so, um, so actually this uh, left a little room Okay, little room for ijtihad, okay, and uh, originality. Okay, so as a result, uh, what happened? So they developed an over-dependence on the works of earlier scholars of the mazhab. All right, okay. So number three, okay, so number three, uh, uh, third factor is that uh, some unqualified individual begin to claim the right, okay, to make ijtihad in order to twist the religion to suit their uh wishes okay and then uh consequently what happened okay many incompetent scholars began making rulings okay which are misguided okay which misguided uh, and uh, uh the masses on a number of issues uh in the uh, ensuing confusion the reputable scholars of the day tried to close the door of ijtihad in order to protect the sharia okay uh in order to protect uh, the sharia from being uh tempered with Okay, so uh, the next uh, factor is that, okay, the tendency of utilizing the view of single mazhab by the judges. Okay, so the tendency of utilizing the view of a single mazhab by the judge, okay, uh, has contributed in the uh, spreading uh, of taqlid. Okay, so uh, during the earlier period, okay, the judges will make their ijtihad in resolving disputes uh, based on their knowledge. Okay, uh, of Quran and Sunnah. However, during this time, what happened? The judges will follow the views, uh, will follow the views of a single mazhab. Okay, uh, a single mazhab. All right. So actually, uh, this will uh, actually uh, affect okay their credibility. Okay, their credibility. Okay, so um, so basically, okay, these are the factors uh, that led to taqlid. Okay, let us move. Okay, so uh, what is that? Okay, so uh, okay, so, uh, sorry. Okay, wait. Okay, contributions of the scholars of this period. Okay, so what are the contributions of the scholars of this period? Okay, so uh, the scholars uh, analyze all the rulings of the mazhab. Uh, Founding scholars deduce the fundamental principles behind the rulings and codify them. Oh, sorry. Okay, so so the scholars of each uh, mazhab analyze all the rulings of their mazhab. Founding scholars deduce the fundamental principles behind their rulings and codify them. Okay, they also made limited istihad on issues. Okay, they also made uh, limited istihad on issues. Uh, which uh, the founders had not come across. Okay, so this istihadat were founded on the established principles of particular mazhab. Okay, so istihad mazhab, as the as this new form of reasoning came to be known, was based on deductions of laws for new issues according to the principles laid down by the founders of the particular mazhab. Okay, so uh, the scholars made the effort to distinguish the strongest view. Okay, target. Huh? The scholars made the effort to distinguish the strongest view from others who had different given uh, views on specific issues. So this is called Tarjih. Okay, so during this period, uh, they made Tarjih. Huh? Tarjih between the views, okay, which one the strongest, 
Okay, which one is the weakest, right? So this process is called tarje, and at this time, it's normally involved the favoring of certain opinions held by held by scholars. Okay, within a given view, a given mazhab over other opinions of that mazhab of the same topic, right? So um, difference of opinions on one issue uh, within a school had arisen when the founding scholars, okay, as well as their students, changed their earlier uh, opinions. Okay, tarje, huh? All right, so next. So these are contributions of the uh, Muslim scholars during this time, during this period. Okay. Okay, now we move to uh, the sixth stage, stagnation and reinvention. All right. Okay, so this period began with the fall, began with the fall, uh, fall of Baghdad in the 7th century of Hijra and extended at the present. Okay, this period also include the rise of Ottoman Empire. Okay, founded in the 1299 uh, Christ era until its decline under the attacks of European uh, colonialism. Okay. So, uh, what happened during this time? Okay, uh, colonialism. Yeah. So, it begins with the fall of Baghdad in the 7th century of Hijra and ascended at the present. Okay. So the trend of Taklid continued. There were some reformers who called for the assassins of Ishti Haid. Okay, some of them, okay, among this, among these reformers, okay, uh, were Ahmad Ibn Taymiyyah, okay, reformers, yeah. So they actually encouraged to do Ishti Haid, yeah. Okay, uh, for, for example, Muhammad Ibn Ali Shawkani, Ahmad Ibn Ar-Rahim, okay, uh, better known as Shah Waliullah Al-Adilawi, okay, Jamaluddin Al-Afghani, we have uh, the reformists, okay, and also uh, Muhammad Abdu, okay, Muhammad Abdu also among the reformists. So, uh, despite the efforts by these scholars, okay, they were not altogether free from the criticism, okay, uh, they received uh, many criticism. Okay, from those who oppose uh, who oppose their ideas and opinion. Okay, so the inclination towards the uh, was still dominant. Okay, prominent. Okay, dominant among the uh, scholars. Okay, so, uh, the Muslim scholars during this time. Okay, so um, this actually uh, led to the Sharia being associated uh, to the four mazhab. Okay, and the fanaticism towards mazhab became a uh, prevalence. Okay, even even though there are efforts from these people, the reformers, but still. Uh, Takrit, okay, was still a uh, dominant, okay, among the uh, Muslim scholars during this uh, period of time. Okay, um, then what? What else? Okay, so the codification of Islamic law by the Ottoman Caliphs, known as Majalatul Ahkam Al Adaliyah, the Just Code. Okay, so uh, during this time also, the sixth stage. Okay, uh, uh, there was codifications of Islamic law, yeah, the Muamala, the codification of Islamic law by the Ottoman Caliphs, okay, known as uh, Majarat al-Akkam al-Adaliyah. Okay, so this actually was drafted by uh, scholars, okay, uh, during this uh, time, yeah. Okay, the colonization of Muslim states by the Western power has drastically affected the development of Islamic law, okay, because of uh, this colonization. Uh, colonialization of Muslim states by the Western power has drastically affected the development of Islamic law, yeah, affected the uh, actually fake. Okay. So, for example, uh, expeditions from Columbus, uh, Vasco de Gama. Okay. So, this uh, development actually, okay, uh, the European law, the European law codes, okay, replace Islamic laws, okay, because of this colonialism, okay, colonialization. Okay, the uh, European law codes replace Islamic laws. Okay, throughout throughout the Muslim world. Okay, uh, okay. Although European uh, colonialism has actually ended, okay, in Islamic world, uh, but you know, uh, there's still an influence. Yeah, uh, many uh, Muslim countries are still are very much influenced. Okay, uh, by the colonial. Okay, colonial law, okay, be it uh, British, uh, and extra. Okay, so actually, Islamic, has, Islamic law has ceased, uh, stopped to be practiced in all Muslim countries, okay, with the exceptions of some countries that have adopted certain aspects of Islamic law, such as Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Jordan, and extra, Iran also. 
yeah, uh, except for certain uh, Muslim countries. Uh, but the rest, they are affected by the European laws. Okay. Okay, so uh, okay, the codifications of FIC. Okay, what happened? So the codification of FIC. Uh, several forms of codifications of FIC. Okay, so um, any several forms of writing the text. Okay, the text of FIC developed. Okay, by the scholars during this period. Uh, of the developments of FIC. Okay, so one of them is the interest of the scholars uh, to summarize okay, the different topics of FIC and compile them okay, as a book, Al Mutun. Okay, so the codifications of FIC, uh, many forms in uh, many forms. Okay, for example, this one. Okay, first, uh, summarization. Okay, summarize the, the Muslim scholars, they summarize the different topics of FIC and compile them. Okay, as a book, okay, name as or called as Mutun, okay, Al Mutun. So this Al Mutun is very brief and compact, okay, uh, that they need for the explanation in order to uh, really understand, okay, to be fully understood. Okay, so Al Mutun is very detailed, it's very compact, okay, so we need uh, more explanation, okay, to understand. Okay, so therefore, uh, some other scholars, okay, they will provide it for the explanation, uh, explanations for this uh, mutun, okay, so this called as shuro, okay, sharah, uh, shuro also, okay, so uh, some of uh, Muslim scholars, okay, they will write uh, shuro, uh, sharah, okay, in order to explain more, okay, uh, for this uh, mutun, okay, so the shuro is followed by another explanation of certain words, uh, certain words used in it, okay, which is called al-hawashi, okay, there are also Another explanation of certain words, okay, used in it, okay, uh, called as al hawashi. Okay, it's about words, so the explanations uh, of certain words, okay. Uh, this also is, you know, to help, okay, uh, any, uh, for uh, them, for the people to uh, fully understood, okay, to fully understand uh, the meaning, yeah? the mutu, the shara. Okay. So, uh, okay, so this method is followed by the scholars that result in many mutun being written and explained, and these materials are used in the teachings and discussion, okay, of the methods related to fiqh, okay. So, uh, for example, okay, uh, there are some scholars who have produced uh, better and easier to understand these uh, uh, writings, I mean, understand writings such as the book al Muwafaqat, yeah, book al Muwafaqat of Imam al Shatibi and Zad al Ma'at, uh, Imam, Imam Ibn Qayyim. Okay, uh, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah and others. Okay, so, uh, all right, next, some scholars compact the legal verdicts, okay, fatwa known as Kutub al Fatawa. Okay, for example, uh, Fatawa Ibn Taymiyyah, okay, Fatawa al Bazariyah, and Fatawa al Hindiyah. So, the other uh, popular compilation, okay, forms of compilation during this period is the uh, compilations of legal verdict, fatwa issued by the scholars of that time. Okay, so like I said, uh, for example, fatwa ibn Taymiyyah, fatwa ibn Bazariyah, and fatwa al Hindiya. Okay, so the scholars who issued the fatwa of their followers, okay, of uh, the fatwa, the scholars who issued the fatwa, okay, their followers compile these legal verdicts, the fatwa, and they are compiled according to the different topics of fiqh. Okay, uh, so the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah are normally quoted to uh, support. Okay, so uh, fatwa, yes, yeah, they compact the fatwa, then they support, uh, supported this uh, fatwa uh, with the evidence from the Quran and Sunnah and, uh, okay, Quran and Sunnah. So these compilations are named as uh, Kutub al-Fatawa. Okay, so here uh, the examples, all right, you can read Ibn Taniya, Fatawa al-Bazaria, and also al-Fatawa al hindiya Okay, so uh, one of the famous one of the famous qualifications of law okay, that took place during the Ottoman period, okay, empire is majala, Majalatul Akam al Adaliyah. Okay, so the majala is considered as the first uh, codification of Islamic law as legal text, as a legal uh, text. So the work of codifying okay, the Islamic transaction, uh, the work of codifying the Islamic uh, transactions, okay, law 
uh, Mu'amalah begins in the, in the year of one, uh, 1285 Hijrah and was completed in the year uh, 100, uh, 1293 Hijrah. Uh, so this is the duration to complete this uh, compilation of, uh, I mean, the Islamic transaction, uh, transactional law, okay, named as uh, this Majalatil Akam al Adaliyah. Okay, so uh, after the above, uh, okay, so after the, uh, I mean, uh, the qualifications after this uh, qualification has been completed, so the effort to qualify the laws in several uh, Islamic uh, countries started. Okay, so uh, among the states that uh, uh, involve or that have embarked, okay, on such effort. Okay, for example, Iraq, okay, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, okay, Tunisia, and also uh, Morocco. So most of these qualifications deals with uh, this one, the personal law, yeah, the, the qualifications of personal law. So most of these um, qualifications with the uh, deal with the personal law, yani al ahwal al shaksiya. Okay. So for example, al ahwal shaksiya included includes um you know like for example marriage you know distributions of uh, inheritance okay uh divorce for example maintenance nafka okay and all that so these are all included okay in al-ahwal uh, al-shaksiya or personal law okay so after this qualification i mean uh this muslim state okay muslim uh, country they started to uh, do the qualification uh, you know, the codification uh, of law, yeah, uh, uh, this personal law. Okay. Okay, so present states of Islamic law, okay, uh, what happened uh, during this present time, okay, so uh, what about fiqh, yeah? Uh, during this time. So Islamic law is developing uh, from time to time. However, the law has not been given due recognition as it is not being fully implemented. Okay, there are some countries that still maintain uh, some aspects, okay, some aspects of Islamic law. Okay, Islamic law is developing uh, from time to time, okay, according to development that is taking a place within the Muslim Ummah. However, okay, the law has not uh, been given due recognition Okay, uh, as it is not being fully implemented, particularly, okay, uh, after the fall of the Ottoman uh, Empire. So, uh, yes, there are still some countries that still maintain the same aspects of Islamic law. There are still uh, uh, some countries, okay, um, in terms of inheritance, marital law, recent modification. So, for example, Malaysia is embarking uh, on developing uh, different, what called, uh, areas okay pertaining to Islamic banking and finance okay so for example Malaysia so they embark uh, developing different uh, areas okay pertaining uh, Islamic banking and finance for example okay so as far as the fatwa uh, and verdicts on contemporary issues are concerned so there are several uh, fic academies okay to deal with uh, contemporary issues Okay, uh, related to Islamic law, for example, we have Majma um, al-Buhuth al Islamiya. Okay, so these are the examples of the academies yeah, to deal with contemporary issues. Like, for example, Majma al-Buhuth al Islamiya in Egypt, okay, uh, 1961, okay, or founded by University al Azhar. Okay, so this academy has members from different mazhab. Okay, who represent Muslim in their respected countries, and uh, the Sheikh of Azhar is uh, is its head. Yeah? Okay, so we have also a World Fiqh Academy. Okay, another well known uh, Fiqh Academy. Another well uh, another well, well known Fiqh Academy is the World uh, Fiqh Academy. Okay, World Fiqh Academy. Uh, established under the umbrella of OIC, the okay, Organization of Islamic uh, Conference, OIC, uh, 1981. Okay, so this academy was established. Uh, okay, uh, was established as a result of uh, the resolution. 
Okay, number eight, uh, three passed in the meeting of all the organizations of Islamic Conference held on 28 January 1981 in Makkah. Okay, so uh, that World Fiqh Academy. Yeah? Okay, so it's founded by the Saudi Arabian government. Okay, so a specific body uh, responsible to issue fatwa for Imus is Islamic country. Uh, countries, for example, uh, Dar al Ifta in almost Arab, uh, in almost Arab countries. Okay, Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan in Malaysia. Okay, for example, we have a Majlis uh, Fatwa Kebangsaan in Malaysia. Okay, so specific body responsible to issue fatwa pertaining to uh, the problems of Fiqh India respected uh, country. Okay, for example, uh, what you call uh, Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan in Malaysia. Okay, so there are these are the body, okay, uh, responsible responsible to take up the uh, tasks, okay, uh, that deal with the contemporary issues, okay, to deal uh, to solve the issues, okay, fake issues, uh, fake contemporary issues, okay. So we have this kind of academies, right? Then um, one of what are the challenges? So one of the challenges, okay, one of the challenges uh, faced by these different bodies. Okay, is to implement the fatwa itself. Okay, yes, we have uh, the bodies that are responsible to give fatwa. Okay, order to solve the fake issues, the contemporary issues, but then uh, the fatwa issues. I mean, the fatwa bodies and also the legislative body are separated. Okay, so therefore, whatever resolution taken, I mean, uh, whatever resolution uh, passed, okay, is passed. Okay, the ifta has to go through. Okay, the legislative uh, body. Uh, in order to, in order for it to be enforced as the law of the country. Okay, so this is uh, among the challenges. Okay, when the legislative body and the uh, IFTA body or Fartawa body, okay, uh, are separated. Okay, they have to go through a uh, certain procedure, okay, for this uh, Fartawa to be enforced, okay, as uh, one of the law of the, as the law of the country. So, for example, in the case of Malaysia, what happened? Okay, in the case of Malaysia, for example, the parliament, okay, parliament of the state uh, executive council uh, is responsible to pass uh, any law. Okay, so uh, from part of our body, they have got, they have, you know, they need to go through this, uh, uh, this body, okay, uh, to be enforced as the law of the country. Okay, so uh, if the Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan, for example, okay, is a fatwa. Okay, so it will not be binding yet. Okay, not it will not be binding and applicable to implement it unless it is uh, passed. Okay, by the parliament or the uh, what we call the state executive council. Okay, so uh, we need to have a concerted effort. Okay, to be I mean in order to make uh, fake or Islamic law. Okay, uh, to play a vital role. Okay, major role, particularly uh, in the Muslim uh, countries. Okay, so yes, effort okay, need to be taken, need to be made, okay, in order for the uh, law, okay, to play a major role in this uh, country or Malaysia, I mean, uh, Muslim countries. Okay, yes. Uh, so these are the present uh, state yeah, of uh, Islamic law. All right. Okay, so I think uh, we have finished. Okay, the sixth stage, I mean the fifth stage and also the sixth stage of the historical development, inshallah. Uh, uh, next session, so we are we will be, we'll be discussing okay on legal mechanisms. Okay, five legal mechanisms, major legal mechanisms. Uh, yes, it's very important also uh, in this, uh, I mean, uh, this topic of uh, discussion. Okay, so then I will pass uh, the mic, okay, to uh, Dato. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.